time heals all wounds. Uh, that's not true, right? Mm. It's not. It's simply not true. If you apply that to physical wounds, some wounds will get way worse because of infection or like I said with a broken bone, if you just allow time to pass. You know, you've been hurt in some kind of way by someone or some situation and really paying attention and slowing down and allowing the proper care of that wound and allowing that wound to heal, that's the proper response. So it's very important what you do within the time. That's actually what helps the wounds to heal. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Fresh Perspective. Fresh Perspective Unpack, Unpacking. So uh, when we do an unpacking series, I have with me Mariki Smith that asks me some questions and we try and unpack uh, answers to those questions and different concepts that we, um, we use in coaching and in the Clarity Quest program and which is helpful on many other areas of life, life I hope, I think. Welcome. Oh, I think so too. <laughs> Thanks, Francois. The question I have for you today is around a series of blogs that you've written um, and people can head over to your podcast, I, uh, to your website. I actually want to encourage them to go to the website and search under the blogs at francoisestreisen.com. Um, A very and they will be... website <laughs> address. <laughs> well... Well, if you were if you were a stupid guy, it would have been stupid. But <laughs> since you're a nice guy, it's nice. Yeah, yeah then it's fine. And <laughs> um, yeah, then it's fine. Yeah, yeah but there's a whole um, series of why the of, pain? Why are you referring to why the pain? Why so, the pain? Yeah, okay. yeah. So there's a series on why the pain, and there's something that I want to zoom in there after having read that. Um, and it was very insightful, by the way. Maybe just as an introductory introductory question for people who maybe haven't read it yet. You, you distinguish between different kinds of pain. Mm -hmm. Can you summarize that in a few sentences? Sure. Um, so I, I think about pain in, in two ways. There's slow pain, pain that tells us that something is wrong, that we need to slow down and pay attention. We might be hurting or um, we, we might have been wounded by something in life. So either a chronic or an acute wound that we are carrying and uh, slow pain tells us slow down and pay attention to this first. Uh, the second kind of pain is grow pain and that's actually the kind of pain you have to choose and that tells you you are doing something important, you are busy with something important, you are investing in yourself um, or you are obviously you're growing. So uh, usually that goes with doing hard or difficult things and important things. So. That's kind of how I play uh, with those slow and grow words to distinguish between the two kinds of pain. I want to ask you, slow pain, you, you uh, frame it in a way that you say it's usually something happening to you. Hmm. What do you mean by that? What, what I mean is uh, circumstances and life, right? So... It might be a, a, a breakup, it might be losing someone close to you, it might be losing your job. So something that's not within your control happens and that affects you. An accident. Uh, you don't have any control over it. It's not because of something you did specifically, even though maybe you did make a mistake and that caused something, uh, some hurt in your life. So that, that's what I mean by that. It's often something that you don't have any control over. Whereas with grow pain, you do, right? You choose that kind of pain. The other one you don't choose, um, but you, you can choose what you do with the pain and how you respond to it. So, so a healthy response to slow pain, what would that look like typically? Yeah, slowing down and paying attention, those are the key concepts for me. When you realize, you know what? Um, for example, every time I try and achieve something or I try and go after something important to me, I kind of find reasons not to. I block myself. I hide. I become fearful. I doubt myself. Uh, sometimes that's an indication of, of slow pain. So pay attention to that. 
ask difficult questions and actually find the answers to those difficult questions. Why am I afraid of conflict? Why do I avoid people, uh, certain kinds of people? Why do I have a problem uh, approaching people in authority positions? Um, you know, it can also be like, why do I become uh, fearful when I have to do a presentation? Uh, and you'll, you, if you're curious about the, those things, either you realize, well, you know, it's, I'm just nervous. But sometimes you discover, you know, I'm, I'm afraid of being rejected. And being curious about that and paying attention to that kind of pain allows you to receive the healing you need. Because pain, that slow pain is, is a wound. You know, you've been hurt in some kind of way by someone or some situation. Uh, and really paying attention and slowing down and allowing the proper care of that wound and allowing that wound to heal, that's the proper response. You know, you don't, if you take a, a physical injury, like say you, you, you break your leg, it's not something you walk off, right? <laughs> it's not something you just like walk it off, tough it up, it'll be okay. If you ignore that and don't pay attention to it and don't give it the proper care and time to heal, you create more and more and bigger and bigger problems. And I think emotionally it works the same way. So it, you need to straighten that broken bone. You need to cast it. You need to keep weight off it for a certain time. Then the cast comes off and then you have to rehab the muscles. Maybe you had some muscle atrophy because of the cast. You have to strengthen those muscles again. Uh, and I think with emotional pain and hurt and wounds, it's the same kind of process, but it's often hidden and we don't want to pay attention to it. Um, and you know what? what's the, the most common way I find that people avoid paying attention to slow pain? Is believing that time heals all wounds. Uh, that's not true, right? Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's simply not true. Um, and once again, if you apply that to physical wounds, some wounds will get way worse because of infection or like I said with a broken bone if you if you just allow time to pass. So it's very important what you do within the time. That's actually what helps the, the wounds to heal. So on an emotional level, you know, for myself, uh, I've spoken to many people that, that helped me and guided me. I've read a lot of books to understand um, for example, I grew up in an alcoholic home. My dad struggled with alcohol, alcoholism on and off throughout his life. So I knew there's some wounds there, some issues uh, that I carried. So I read a lot of books around that, healing from shame, um, adult children of alcoholics. That's another book that I read. Um, just a bunch of different books to help me understand, well, if this is the situation that I grew up in, what are some of the things I need to pay attention to? So spending time with those things and, and looking at those things and, and not necessarily reliving the past because that can actually be harmful in your process, but understanding, oh, okay, that did happen. This is why I have the following things and here's what I need to do about it. Whether it's forgiving someone, whether it's uh, confronting some fears, whether it's rewriting certain beliefs. Um, there's a whole bunch of things around that. Yeah, I can keep so talking you see, for a while. So therefore, I will interrupt you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I want to ask you because you see many couples and you see many people in adulthood. Um, how would it present if previously in your life there was slow pain that you ignored, if there were muscles that atrophied and you and you were simply waiting for time to heal the, those wounds from slow pain. Mm. How would that typically present when somebody comes to you? Yeah. So you grow more and more sensitive to certain things. Right. So um, if someone, let's say someone ignores you or doesn't respond immediately or doesn't respond the way you expect them to respond. 
you know, it triggers a big emotion or a big reaction. So either if you, you are someone that wants to confront things right there and then, maybe you explode and you get very aggressive. If you are someone that wants to avoid, you, um, you shut down and you withdraw. Because there's a, a, you know, we, we call it this energy behind it. You feel a lot of energy behind a certain thing. And, you know, that's like having a wound that's not been cleaned or paid uh, any attention to or treat it that's infected you know it's it's a it's a it's a horrible thing to see it's a horrible thing that that happens when you don't treat it and emotionally the same thing happens so now you know i i was bitten by a dog on my arm yes yeah? so i've got a big scar here on my arm and it got infected after a week or so because the the doctor didn't clean it uh, the right way properly and i almost lost my arm because of it so they gave me a week in hospital to see if they could save my arm and, and luckily they could. But I remember going to school and just avoiding anyone touching me. You know, just a bump on the other side of my body would trigger pain on this side. And that's kind of what happens when you don't pay attention to it. And you keep repeating and re-wounding uh, in the same way, in the same place you become more and more and more sensitive. So sometimes people will get divorced, you know, find someone else, but now they are doubly as sensitive to topics that was an issue in their previ previous relationship because of the wounding. It's festered, it's, it's, it's unhealthy, you know, and they are more sensitive. So that's one indication. If you are very, very sensitive about a certain thing, that means that thing has been left and left and left for a very long time. And it becomes, sorry, Marike, and it becomes the voice, the, the, the call of the slow pain becomes loud and more urgent because you need to pay attention to it to, to function. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think also what I've, I've experienced is it's easy in certain friendships and relationships to, to start avoiding people who are bumping into that sore shoulder or who is um, triggering that pain. But once I got married and I had children, I couldn't avoid it any longer because I, I'm in this relationship where I'm faced with my, with my slow pain scars every day. Um, if, if, and I did the wonderful thing for myself to join the Clarity Quest, but, but how, would, how would it look in a relationship or in a close relationship um, if, if that pain comes up and you still try to avoid it. Hmm. So you mean when it's triggered and yeah. you, you still avoid it? What does that look it's like? It's triggered, and, but you project your feelings onto the people around you, but now you can't avoid them. Hmm. You. you but, but you, you, you fail to recognize that this is coming from somewhere within myself. Yeah, I understand. So if it's a person that you, you cannot leave or avoid, that's always there. So you yeah. are constantly, yeah. okay, I understand. Yeah. Um, well, you used the word project now. And, and so, so let me talk about projection and transference within relationships specifically, especially uh, marriages, romantic relationships. But obviously, uh, we most of us know about projection. So this is something that I feel, but I'm projecting it onto you. Right. So uh, I'm the one that's being uh, ignorant or I'm the one that's ignoring you or I'm the one that's um, maybe um, uh, brutally honest, you know, in an insensitive way. But when you tell me something, honestly, I'm, I'm, I blow up or I withdraw completely. That's projection, right? It's something that you, you don't like that you project onto another person. And it's also part of the shadow side. So it's, it's maybe uh, a lot more layered than that, um, that we may go into another time. The other thing is transference. And what's fascinating about transference to me is when you are married to someone that does not trigger certain things within you. 
So they don't, they're not, uh, they listen to you, they're patient, where maybe you expect them to ignore you and be impatient. But transference uh, needs that conflict to happen, right? So it treats your partner as if they are ignoring you and they are impatient. Because you need to create that dynamic because that's the only place where you know how to operate. Because um, if you were ignored, for example, as a child, that's a wound. So now you expect to be ignored again and you know how to be that kind of person. Either by living without the attention or, you know, making a lot of noise to get the attention. So now you have someone that gives you the attention and transference will cause you to treat your partner as if they are not. Because you are uncomfortable getting into that new role. So that's another indication of slow pain. You need to pay attention because if that conflict repeats again and again, and in most marriages you'll find the, the loop of conflict repeating. And conflict is information. What information? Around pain. The information is is 90% about you uh, when there's conflict. So being curious about that, often that's where you discover, oh, wait a minute, this is, to put it in plain language, this is, this is my baggage or this is my issue that I need to understand. And uh, it might be as simple as talking about it to your partner and explaining, you know what, I am sensitive around this topic because of this. And it doesn't mean your partner has to change. It just allows your partner to understand. You have to change, not your partner. You are the one who have to change. You have to take responsibility and address that. You can ask your partner for help around that and support around that. But if you expect them to change, you are once again giving away responsibility. Firstly, you have to see how can I change? How can I ask for what I need? And how can I address certain needs that I have around this? Um, <clears throat> and whether it's projection or transference, it's, it's the same thing. Being curious, okay, this repeats. Um, another thing that might indicate that there's slow pain through conflict is if you have the same, either you have the same issue within your marriage over and over again, within your intimate relationships, ship, or you have it, with other relationships, you see, it's the same theme. You said the, the people like that upset me. When people do this, it upsets me. So you can find clues around some of the, the slow pain that you need to pay attention to when you see certain things that you criticize about other people or things that you hate that other people do or don't do. Um, and once again, it's got to do with our shadow side or our lost self. So there's a saying that goes, you know, there's something about that guy I really hate about myself, like tongue in the cheek. Mm. Um, mm. Either you have that exact exact same traits that you, you don't see, or uh, that person has a, a, a um, something that you actually want. Either you envy a good trait, or maybe that person is confident, but because you envy that, you see there's a negative thing. So once again, there's conflict that indicates some, some area of pain. So traditionally, people would knock on the door of a counsellor um, and, and there's a certain way that a counsellor would treat this um, um, or a psychologist, maybe I should say. What's the difference when, when you realise that slow pain is catching up with you? Where... What would maybe be the difference in approach between knocking on the door of a psychologist and a life coach, typically? Hmm. Maybe stereotypically. Yeah. Um, look, there's, there's a lot of things that, that can help you if you do counseling, therapy, you see a psychologist, in terms, terms of revisiting and talking about the past and the wounds. That can be very helpful. What I've found is that can also be hurtful because often that's all that happens. 
So without tools to reframe what has happened, uh, people get stuck there. And all they do is talk about that. And in effect, they, they are actually just reliving it and reinforcing the emotional habits around that, but also the neuro pathways around that by reliving the story, telling it over and over again. So, um, but that is typically what, what will happen. You'll talk about it. Tell me what happened then, tell me what happened there. So I've moved away from that approach um, and focused more, okay, we can't change the past, but we can change what we believe about it. So in coaching, it will be, okay, what, what do you want? What do you want to achieve? Who do you want to become? Whether it's a specific goal, like building a business, or an emotional thing. Well, I, I, I want to feel confident as a goal. Whatever that is, uh, then the question becomes, okay, how, how is that holding you back? What pain do you experience when you are trying to go after that? What's the obstacles? And often then we realize, well, I believe certain things about myself or, or, or about life or success or whatever. And then we can trace back, well, okay, why? Well, because this happened to me or I grew up in these circumstances. So that's kind of where I started believing this and it got reinforced over many years. And now I've taken over the voice, say, of a very critical father. I've taken over that voice and I'm my own critic now. I'm echoing, echoing the words of my father. It might not even be around anymore. So that for me is, is the major difference. Is the one, you know, looks at the past, relives it. The other looks to your future and dreams and then reframes the past in a way. Um, by helping you take action in the present. Yeah, I think that would be the major differences for me. And if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, what are, what are the different options um, that they can get involved with, with stopping a putt with you? <laughs> stopping a putt. Um, yeah, I work with both individuals and with couples. So uh, on my site, there's a link to a free consultation. Either you can do one of my courses um, just to see if you like the kind of stuff that I do and the way I present it. Um, but if you feel you want to take more, uh, what shall I call it, aggressive action, uh, you can book a consultation call. Um, I'll ask you some questions there. Some of them will be uncomfortable. And then I'll send you some prep work, uh, a video or two to watch and some questions to fill out before our conversation and um, if you show up prepared we'll have a great conversation around exactly what you need and I'll be able to determine whether I can help you or not if I'm a good fit and also you'll by that stage have seen some of my stuff and also in the conversation we'll be able to say okay you know what we we click because that's a relationship as well um, and we can move forward and decide what what will be the best program or option for you you know, that, that, that's the way I work. <clears throat> Thank you, Francois. Oh, Mariki. I'm yet Beautiful. to find a question that you can't answer, <laughs> but I'm working on it. I can definitely answer <laughs> all of them, but I don't. Uh, I, I, I don't know if the answers will serve everyone, but I know that it serves a lot of people. So yeah, thank you for giving me this opportunity to just think out loud around certain topics. Um, yeah. And, Coming to these unprepared and, and just being able to talk about it. Things that I have to explain to, to clients in different contexts over and over. Uh, it's good to capture it like this. And maybe someone stumbles on this and it gives them some momentum to either take action and book a call with me or take action and see someone else or just kind of reframe their relationship. Yeah, I'm, I'm strongly convinced that that's the role that this plays so fantastic thanks francois thanks for your time thank you thank you everyone for listening we'll see you in uh, the next episode of uh, or you will hear us if you are not watching this on youtube in the next episode of fresh perspective bye